Hello there and welcome to this video on Visual Basic .NET programming. In this video we're going to look at variables and data types. So the first thing I'm going to do is create the project. I head over to Visual Studio 2019, I click create new project and then I've got a drop down list of all my languages. Make sure Visual Basic is selected and then head over to Windows Form App .NET Framework. We click next and then we give it our project name. So this is going to be called variables and data types. Make sure it's saved in a, in a correct location or a folder and then click create your project. Once that's been created, you'll see all of the common entities that we had last time. So toolbox, the solution explorer, the properties window and your design itself. For this project, we're going to create a couple of buttons. We're going to add some objects in here and we're going to do some code at the back of those buttons. So here I've got a single button. Now what I want to do is I just want to make this button a little bit bigger and I'm going to change the font property of that button to make it a little bit larger so people can see it. And once I'm happy with that button, I might even I might even change some of the colors. So if I change the background color of the button to, let's go, let's go dark gray. Okay. And I might even change the text to white, for example. So once I'm happy with the button, you are allowed to copy and paste things in Visual Studio. So here we are. I've got a couple of buttons there. I might even add buttons as I go along. So this button here is going to be a button for BTN. It's going to be our string button. Okay. Now at this point, you might not be aware of what a string is, but it is one of our data types that we're going to look at. So I'll change its text to string. So when you click it, what's going to happen? I'm going to create something called a variable. A variable is common in every single programming language that I've ever come across. A variable is something that holds information. Usually it's space in memory that holds some kind of data. And as with the word vary, it can change throughout the life of the program and they are useful little um, constructs in our programming code that hold information for us. So I've just double clicked the string button and I want to create a variable now, a little container in memory that's going to hold some data. So in order to do that, we start with the word dim. Now look what's happened when I've typed in the word dim. Below is a drop down box of lots of different suggestions. And this is one of the advantages of an integrated development environment such as Visual Studio. It produces some code for us and it tries to complete things for us. All I'll do now is I'll accept the suggestion. I can move down, I can move up the suggestions. But to select it, I press the tab key that's just above the caps lock button on my keyboard. So I press that and it accepts the suggestion. Notice that I, I typed in a lowercase d there. It's changed to an uppercase d because it also corrects my syntax as I'm going. One of the other advantages of IDEs. So all variables in Visual Basic .NET start with the word dim. And dim is short for dimension and it's the declaration of memory space. So dim, and I'll put string, string variable. Now already the code is trying to suggest the next steps, string variable as, and then I can give it a data type. So if I type in string there, that's one of our data types. So what, what is a string for? A string is multiple characters from the alphabet. It can also contain numbers, but it will take them in as text. So here I'm just going to put a little comment. So a comment in Visual Basic .NET comes in the form of an apostrophe. And watch now as everything that I write after the apostrophe turns green. So 
So a string variable, a string variable is multiple characters. So here I've declared my string variable and I can give it a value. So I can say string variable. So there it appears at the top of my list as a local variable. And it's going to have some information inside of it. So string variable is going to have a string. And I might put in there, hello. Now notice that my hello is all characters from the alphabet and it's separate, surrounded by speech marks. All strings have speech marks. Even if I wanted to put the number one, that would have to be in speech marks also. So let me just change that back to hello. And what I can do now, because it's stored in the variable, if we just interrogate this line here, what does this actually mean? It says, take your string variable that you've created in memory and assign it using the equal symbol. That means take anything from the right hand side and give it the value into the variable. So hello is assigned into the string variable variable. So in it goes and it's happy sitting in there. And what I can do is I can just use a message box and I can print out the string variable, which is fantastic. So if I start my program, let's just see what that does. And there it is, there's my program. I click string and it outputs hello in a message box. Now why does it output hello? Well, it's because hello is now held inside the word string variable. So when I output string variable, it's going to actually output hello because that's what's contained inside of that container. So just try and get your head around that because the more time you spend manipulating and using variables, the easier they become to understand. Now that's all well and good for information that is multiple characters, but what if I went back to my design and I changed this text property um, and I changed the text to a character, okay? So in this button, all we're gonna do is we're gonna create a button that outputs a single character. So btn char, which is short for character, and if I double click my character button, here we are, here's my information for my character event handler. So I'll do the same process again, but this time a char is a single character from our alphabet, okay? So I'll do the same thing, I'll use dim, because I want to declare a variable, and I'll say char variable. So again, another good self-documenting identifier because it's named after what you're going to write in it. So I'll say char there as of as type char declares that it's going to be a variable that's going to hold a character. And then what I'll do is I'll say char is equal, sorry, char variable is equal a single character. Now, you might think, well, why, why is this useful? It's useful because we want to reduce the number of letters that we use. So, for example, if we come to um, some kind of manager or sales program and somebody types in their name, username and password and we get to the point where we say, okay, are you a manager or are you a, just a, a, a general staff member? Then... If I put the word manager, each single character is going to be eight bits, okay? Eight single bits. So that will take up more, in, more memory than just writing a single character to represent M for manager and S for staff, okay? So once that happens, we can then output a char variable. Okay, off it goes, 
And now at this point, what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to click character and it produces the letter M. String still produces hello. So, so far, so good. There's a few more data types that we need to be aware of. Um, for the next one, talking about numbers now. So this one is going to hold an integer. Okay. Integers are whole numbers. So you might think, why are we talking about whole numbers? So I'll call this one BTN integer. What this means is it allows us to create whole numbers. So integer uh, whole numbers. That means they don't contain decimal places. Integer variable as integer. Okay. So let's just step it up a notch. So if I wanted somebody to enter information into our system, I can do that using something called an input box. And that requests an input from the user. Now, when you write input box, you have brackets after it. And inside the brackets, you use speech marks to ask a question. So I might say to them, please, please enter a number. Okay. After the person's entered a number, they'll produce the information and it gets stored inside the integer variable. So remember, equal symbol means assign. So assign the integer variable whatever's coming back from the input box. Now it's important to point out here that the input box will return a string. Okay? It will return a string. So we'll deal with that issue a little bit later on, but at this point, it won't really affect what we do with our program. I'll click on the integer box now, and you'll see that this appears. Variables, data types, please enter a number. I'll type in 13, unlucky for some, and it produces 13, so a message box. So that seems to work for us. Moving on from here, we need to consider the next thing on here, which the next piece of information. So the next piece of information that we're going to need, if we've got whole numbers, then we need to also consider floating point numbers or decimal numbers. And there's a number of different ways to use decimal numbers inside Visual Basic. There's a number of ways to use decimal numbers inside Visual Studio using the Visual Basic .NET programming language. So, the first thing I need to do is create my button for this. I'm going to use decimal numbers. So here we are. Give the name BTN decimal because it's a button that has decimal values. And I'm going to find, if I can actually find it, I'm going to find the text property. There we go. And this one is called decimal. Okay. Now what you'll find in other programming languages, these will be called reals, they'll be called floats. Um, that all counts for having decimal numbers. In Visual Basic.net, I'll call this decimal variable. So there you go, another declaration of a variable, creating it. This time, we can have a number of different things. We can have as decimal, so it'll have a decimal number. We can have singles, so this is a single precision floating point number. It's quite a short range, this though. It doesn't have that many numbers, really, that you can go up to, but it's sufficient for what we need. And we can also have uh, something called a double, okay? A double precision float number, floating point number. 
a double precision floating point number that allows a bigger range again but normally I just stick to decimal in vb.net and we can do the same, same thing again uh, decimal variable is given the value of 3.14 etc okay message box get, gets produced and there we go we output it as decimal value okay decimal variable gets outputted there so if you test that that should work also and really the only others that we need to really discuss at this point is something called a boolean a boolean what on earth is a boolean well i've changed my text property of my button to say the word boolean and I've changed the, the name of the button to btn boolean. Booleans only represent one bit, so they're very efficient. They only represent either a one or a zero. So if I was to say a boolean is either one of two properties, so it's either true or it's false, okay? And if it's true, it's equal to 1. If it's false, you guessed it, it's equal to 0. So if I was to declare a variable using the word dim, and I said bool, which is short for boolean, variable, and I said as boolean, I can set that variable And I can set it to either true or false. So in this case, I'll set it to true. And then I'll put that out in a message box. Bool variable, there it goes. And when I run my program again, if I click that button now, it should produce the word true. That's what I'm hoping. There we go, it outputs true. Now, Booleans are very useful because normally we use them as Boolean flags that can tell us if something has been clicked or not or set or not, and that's quite useful. So get comfortable using all these different data types here. We've got strings, which is multiple characters. We've got chars, which is a single character. We've got even integers, which are whole numbers. We've got decimal numbers, also called reals or floats in other programming languages that allow for decimal point values. And then we've got Booleans, which are true or false. So in this program, we've made a form with multiple buttons that produce lots of different variable declarations with assignments into those variables. And even on this line number 26, we've produced an input box that allows us to even take an input from a user. So have a go, rewind, go back to the start, Try and put the buttons in, start playing with the properties and adding the code. And I'll see you again in the next video.